Hi, welcome to today's video. It's the RNK Software Club video of the week. <laughs> my name's Trevor Conkergan, and I have with me here, oh, the other way, my buddy Matthew Wilson from RNK Distributing Support Desk. How's it going, Matt? Good. How are you doing, Trevor? I am doing very good. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, thanks for coming on. I love when you get questions, and I think that they often, a good question is kind of appreciated by everyone. And so uh, what do you got for us today, Matthew? Okay, well, this one involves color stops. And we had a customer that said uh, they had a design uh, that was designed in one color, and they wanted to split it into two colors. Uh, and uh, when they uh, used color stops, but tried to combine the same color, um, and then put it on their embroidery machine. Um, uh, there was still uh, it was still showing on the on the embroidery machine uh, stops when there didn't need to be. Right, uh, because they weren't getting combined, kind of thing. Right, and uh, she uh, uh, she tried to do the convert to outlines function um, that did not um, help, and she said, you know, I just would really be able to. Uh, uh, appreciate being able to use the color stop to, to change the colors exactly the way I want. Fair enough. I agree. I mean, to be honest, after looking at the design that you sent me, I think that's the better choice because it's a lace design and converting a lace design, you know, from stitches into objects is going to present new challenges, right? Like did the stitches get messed up or change in any way? And, you know, all she really wants to do is insert stops. And so, um, at first, I was like, I don't quite see, you know, where the problem is. But um, when I actually followed it through, I could see exactly what the customer was talking about, Matt. And so it kind of got me to learn something a little new today. And that's why I was like, do you want to record this? Um, so what I'm going to do, I'll show on my screen what I found, okay? And then I guess how we can resolve it. So um, here, let me see. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking there. Um, yeah. Um, so this is the... This is the design. The, the this is the original, like the in the PES format, and then this is the one that the customer made. That's like in two colors, right? So she, you know, they've done a really good job of sort of breaking it up. Um, but I think, uh, you know, they they ended up using convert to outlines to do this, and number one, it still didn't fully fix it, and number two. Um, you know, some of the stitches got messed up a little bit. And so that is one of the reasons in general where I where I suggest using stitch edits, right? Is when, because we don't want to change the way it sews at all. We just want to insert some stops and kind of reorganize it, right? So, um, so the answer is, I agree. You shouldn't need to do convert to outlines. And so I'm going to go back to the original design and show kind of how I would do this. And then we can look at what happened, you know, and how to fix it. So how to do it, you know, um, when you open up an embroidery design uh, and it's light pink, maybe I'll just make it a little bit brighter pink so that it kind of shows a little bit better on my workspace. Um, I could hide my grid. But if I click on my, you know, slow redraw tool, I can watch it stitch out. And you can speed it up may go faster, may go slower, and you can stop it at any time, right? And and wherever it is, it, there's a little black dot. And that black dot is the current stitch location, right? We are at stitch number 781. And if you want, you can put a stop right there, you know, and make your machine stop at exactly stitch number 781. And so... um what the customer is wanting to do is they're wanting to get to that point where it's like all the mesh is done, but see how now it's putting on like details on top. So they want those to be two colors. So really what you, and I don't know exactly having not stitched this or created it. I don't know exactly where the needle stops need to go. Um, so I'm, you know, we'll let the customer kind of redo what they want, but I'm going to show you how to correct the problem that they were running into. Cause I didn't know either, Matt, I learned as I went, but, and you can even move this one stitch at a time. See that? Like I can go boop, boop, and just one, one little click and every click it moves just one little bit. Um, if you click play, you can slow it down to kind of slow it and I'll pause it right there. So 
it's right at the spot where I think it's going to be where you would stop it. But I could be, it may not be the perfect spot, but I click stop. So if you look at the design now, um, notice in the sequence view that there are two pieces, you know, number one and number two. So that's, you know, what you want, right? You want to take number one and you want to make it the light pink. And then you're going to have dark pink. And so then you would move again to the, to where the dark pink finishes, but where it's going to start your next kind of light pink fill piece. So probably after that border, but before the mesh, somewhere in that zone. And again, I don't know where it is, but I'm going to pick kind of like in here and I see how I can zoom in and I can use my tools to move like one stitch at a time until I get it to, yeah, I can see it's starting to move now onto there. And so if I want, I can even go back one stitch and be like, that's right where I want to stop. And I click stop. So now I'm inserting color stops into the design. And every time I do, it takes that kind of big group of stitches and breaks it into two. One before the stop and the one after the stop, right? So now I've got um, a couple stops. And really, there was just, I had to do it a few times. And so I can do it faster if I don't worry on exactly where I, you know, which needle point it gets to. But in reality, as you want to, right? You want to walk it through, okay, before that. So right around there, you know, somewhere in the push stop. And then, um, you know, that one there could be the light pink again. And so I'm kind of like halfway done now, right? I just have to keep going. So scrub through to the end of the, or end of the pink before the mesh, you know, somewhere around there kind of thing. Um, maybe just pause it that right. Oops. See how touchy it can be. And you get, but you have to sort of zoom in and take the time to get it to be right to the right spot. So I was just going to say, I'll try and do a half decent job at this for you and stop. And right there, pause it and insert another stop. So now we have another color stop. Um, and I would need another one again. So the next one would be after the um, mesh before the uh, borders. So once again, just kind of like sewing backwards and then holding the pause button until I get right to about there, you know, probably close enough and pause. So we would, I think, need to do that one more time to kind of do the whole thing because now I've got that one in light pink, right? So you can see how I'm almost there now. Let's just push it. So you get through to the end of that light pink before it's going to do the next one right around there and you push stop. And then um, while you're at it, you keep going and you get to the where it's going to start the borders and you push stop. So I would have inserted in all the stops here, push forward until I get to just the right spot. And then I'll push stop. And right there. Okay. And push stop. So now we got all our spots and this one's light pink. And um, yeah. So at this point, Matt, you would want to resequence it, right? And that, you know, you're trying to like sort them so that it sews all the light pinks at one time and all the dark pinks at one time. So um, I noticed that the color sort, I tried to use color sort and it didn't seem to reduce them. So I wasn't sure what's up with that. Um, I was going to follow up on that, to be honest, to see, because it should have. But I can easily take, for example, and select this dark pink, select that dark pink, select this dark pink, and then like move those to be uh, the first, you know, or the last kind of thing, make those be last. So now I've got it organized kind of myself. So it does light pink, light pink, light pink, and dark pink, dark pink, dark pink. And I would have thought that just organizing it here like this would make it, um, you know, be one color light pink and one color dark pink. That's what I expect when I go to the machine. And that's what the customer's saying is not happening, Matt. And so I was really surprised because they were 100% correct. Um, when I took it to my machine, it said light pink, light pink, light pink, light pink. And then it said dark pink, dark pink, dark pink, dark pink. So I got thinking about it. Why would it do that? But then I realized, well, I guess it's simply including the stops that I made. I, I inserted color stops and I guess you know, we're, we're editing stitches, you know, these aren't objects. And so 
in these banks of stitches is still a color stop is what's happening. And it's easy to get rid of it now that I've learned how to do it. So the point is, if you get to the machine and it goes light pink, light pink, light pink, and you're like, why would it be like that? Um, here's what you can learn. Okay. So when we're at this stage, Matt, if I go into my stitch edit mode, notice that when you're in stitch edit mode, the sequence view changes, right? Let me go back into select mode and how my sequence view shows, you know, a group of stitches and another group of stitches and another group of stitches. Well, between this group of stitches and that group of stitches, there's a stop. And where you, how to see it is you click on your stitch tool and it shows me. So there's a stop at zero. There's a stop at 4,381. And if I click right here, it says there's a needle change. And I can change it to be a normal stitch and click apply. And look, that got rid of the color stop. And then there's another color stop at 5,990. And I just select that and I change that to be a normal and click apply. And so this is something that I've never really experimented with myself before. But the idea is when you're in select mode, you're selecting the banks of stitches, you know, and you've combined them all together. But what you can't really see is that there's actually a needle stop, you know, that's been inserted with the, you know, right here, we put it in and we can take them out, but we have to use our stitch edit mode. So notice if I sent this to my machine right now, it would sew all the light pink in one color, but it would still stop three times for the dark pink. So the first one, I presume I want it to stop because that's the beginning of the color. But the second one, I probably want that to be a normal. And the third one, I want that to be a normal. And so I think at this point, Matt, we got the design down to two color stops. And it sews exactly probably as the color want, the customer would want it to. Um, I may or may not have actually got the color stops exactly where they want them to. And so in that case, I don't really know. Uh, I sh you know I'm not going to send you the file. But if the customer watches, then that'll help them to kind of figure it out. So yeah, I brought you back on camera there. Um, so was that interesting, Matt? Because I, it may not be for everyone. <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh, yeah, that was something I wasn't aware of. And yeah, that's one of those that ones that if you really um, you know want to know, that's what you need to know. And for everyone else, you may not want to know all that. But that said, it's interesting to know that you can insert a color stop like that. Um, but just knowing that inserting color stops by combining them does not get rid of them. And if you want to get rid of them, you actually have to go back in and take them out again kind of thing. And so we were able to use it to slice up the design to get the eight pieces and then put them back together and then get rid of the stops. And so it sews color one and color two. So thank you so much, Matthew, and to our wonderful Floriani customer for a good question because it got me uh, to do a little bit of homework and a little bit of learning and thanks uh, very much. You're very welcome. All right, well, I'll let you go for today then, Matt. Thanks very much. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>